Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and after many years in development hell, Five Nights at Freddy's The Motion Picture is finally being released today. Assuming, of course, you're watching this today and not tomorrow or yesterday. Regardless, there's a new movie out for one of the most beloved horror franchises in gaming history, and I'm nothing if not a simp to the algorithm. So I thought I'd make a little Freddy of my own. Five Nights at Freddy's, or FNAF, for the real fans, is essentially a game about watching TV screens and getting overly excited and yelly while streaming on Twitch. The titular character, Frederick Von Fazbear III, is the animatronic agnostic of the game, which makes him a bit wishy-washy when discussing the existence of a higher power. No wait, that can't be right. Sorry, he's the animatronic antagonist, which just makes him the bad guy. Think Chuck E. Cheese, but less horrifying. What I'm trying to say is that he's a robo-bear that sings and contains the soul of a murdered child. The important part is the robo-bear part though, since he needs to have exposed wiring and metallic bits underneath his outer bear shell. I figured I could easily do that by just over-engineering my armature with lots of extra little bits of wiring sticking out. Once I've built up the robo-bear bones, I can begin the embodying of my bear by building up a layer of brown clay. I'm going to build up my bare body in sections since I really want to make sure the metallic bits beneath are clearly visible and to add to the idea that the brown bits are just added on top of the animatronic frame. I'll start with the torso first, making sure the shoulder sections are open to expose the wiring beneath then once I've got roughly the right size I can smooth it out and bake it to keep from smooshing it while I get to work adding the rest of the bear. I'll make his all brown bear underwear next, removing a layer around his waist to again expose the spinal wiring, then I can build up his robo bear biceps in the same manner followed by his forearms. I can then bake it all again to make sure I don't ruin the smooth clay I've added up to this point before essentially repeating these steps for his legs. As a shout out to modern day AAA gaming studios, I'm gonna build the body in a T-pose. This makes adding the clay and smoothing it out much easier than if I'd already posed Freddy and since I'm leaving the joints exposed for artistic reasons, I can simply repose him later when he's fully sculpted. I think, I hope, I don't know, we'll find out together. After all, the real T-pose is the friends we made along the way. With my legs built up and the body baked again, I can fit Freddy into a little wooden block and begin the enfootening by wrapping some brown sausages around his stumps and adding slash removing clay until I've got the right size lumped into which I can cut two sets of three toes. I can then poke and prod and push the clay around until I've got a pair of oversized under-digited bear paws at which point Freddy can be baked once more. Also, I made a purple bunny body for Bonnie and a yellow chicken body for Chica. Bonnie's body is pretty well identical to Freddy's except his feet are slightly larger whereas Chica's feet are two-toed chicken feet. Beyond that though, the process was pretty much the same. Back to the bear body, I'll clip the wires extending from his feet and build up his big light brown belly. To pad the feet, I'll smoosh a thin sheet of light brown clay onto a baking tray, then press Freddy's feet on top and cut the clay close to the edge. I'll then drill a hole in the center of his shoulders to fit another length of armature wire, but before I make Freddy's face, I'll add his classy bow tie. To make his mouth, I'll start by smooshing a little loop of brown clay onto his shoulder just above his bow tie, but leaving the back of the wire slightly exposed since Freddy's head doesn't fully connect to his lower jaw. I've pre-baked some squares of white clay so I can give his lower jaw some teeth. Then I added another pre-baked bit of gray clay on top so that I can add his extra xenomorph mouth inside. I'll then chrome his dome and cover that in more brown clay so I can begin the inheadening which starts as a lump of brown clay that I can add little lumps onto until I've got an approximation of an animatronic bear head, at which point I can pull it off the neck wire, add some eyeball holes for future eyeballs, and a nose shell for a future nose. At this point, Freddy's head is looking a little bit like a spider mask, so I'll stick it back on the body, add the nose to the nose shelf, and fill the eye sockets with black clay, followed by little pre-baked eyeballs covered in little lumps of black clay for the eyelids. Then a little black coin pressed onto the top of his head followed by a slightly tapered black tube will be his dapper top hat and I can stick some little black worms above his eyes for eyebrows before getting on to making his ears. I'll crimp a thick length of armature wire with my pliers to flatten the metal then I can stick them into some pre-drilled holes in the sides of his head and snip them to size before attaching some little lumps of brown clay which, once textured, will be his ears. 
Finally, to make Freddy's hands, I'll take a little lump of brown clay, cut a few fingers and a thumb into, and then pull and prod and poke until they're mostly smooth. I also made a little microphone from a little length of black clay and a gray ball, which he can wrap his right hand around. I'll then do the same thing for his left hand, but without a microphone before baking them both and attaching them to the exposed wire. Now with my hands in place, I can bend the arms into place to achieve my final awkward animatronic pose. Last but not least, now that the arms are into their final position, I can add his little shoulder pads and that's Freddy Fazbear finally finished, which means I just need to repeat these steps for the other two. First up is Bonnie, whose belly gets a pinkish purple plastered over top, then attached to the undersides of his feet. I'll then add his little red bow tie, followed by a similar lower jaw to Freddy's, but this one goes all the way around and has a little red on the bottom for reasons I don't remember, into which I can stick some round rather than square teeth. After I've added the extra inside metal mouth and the necessary back of the head bits, I can then add the top half of the head and the extended bunny nose, followed by a big ol' eyeball holes filled in with black clay and white eyeballs. A longer length of wire crimped flat will give me a surface to glue some pre-baked pink pieces onto that I can then wrap in a layer of purple clay to make Bonnie's ears. I'll then carve some flat-edged orifices into the top of his head to fit said ears, and it's on to making his axe. I've printed out a little scale appropriate guitar for Bonnie to be wailing on and used it to cut out a thick V-shaped clay cake. I'll snip the tip off the clay so I can make the neck out of a flattened bit of dowel and then the head out of an even flatter tongue depressor. Finally, the tuning pegs are made of the pointy tips of six toothpicks, and with his weapon of choice finished, I can make Bonnie's hands and pose his body so that he can hold his guitar at an appropriately uncomfortable angle. Finally, he'll get some shoulders of his own, and it's on to Chica. Chica's belly isn't a belly, but a white bib that wraps around her neck, so I'll make sure to carve a hole into the top, then I can make her head by wrapping a little aluminium ball in clay and adding some eye holes and a mouth. To make her beak, I'll attach a beak and build it up and blend it into the face between the eyes, then add some itty bitty square teeth into the back of her head to make her own extra inside mouth. Then the bottom of the beak can get added to the bottom, blended in and toothed up with some even smaller, squarer teeth. Once I've added the black pits with white balls, I'll make her little tuft on top and her oversized black eyebrows before pressing her head firmly onto her body and adding her hands and her shoulders. However, she's not done just yet, since we still need to make the cake on the plate. I'll start with plate by squishing a little lump of white clay into a little flat circle of white clay. I'll then roll the orange lump into a slightly tapered lump, then carve some little cupcake indents into the side before squishing it onto the plate. To make the creamy top coat, I'll add a little lump of red clay, then cover it in a thinner, drippier layer of also red clay, then poke some eye holes and add some teeth before baking it so I can add the little black pits and white eyes and a little toothpick candle on top to finish it off. Otherwise, with that, the sculpting is finished, so it's time to add some paint. I'll start by dirtying up the bodies and adding the same color but slightly darker to make each of the animatronics look old and worn out. By stippling and stabbing with my brush, I can make the coats look extra wonky. I'll build up progressively darker shades until I've got a nice ugly top coat. I'll then paint Freddy and Bonnie's internal mouthy bits with a gunmetal gray before touching up any of the overpainted bits with a solid black. Chica's legs and beak will get a darker orange top coat, and once that's done I'll get the Let's Eat on her bib written in yellow and highlighted with purple before adding lots of little dots of color to finish her bib off. Finally, I can paint the tips of her toes with a gunmetal gray. The neck of Bonnie's guitar gets painted black and the body gets a dark red wash then once that's dried I can paint the pick guard white and the head white as well. I'll then paint the tuning knobs with various colors before adding some incredibly wonky white lines for the strings. Finally I'll give the guitar a grey wash to make it look well worn. For the cupcake I'll do a messy wet blend of pink into red to give the top a bit of a gradient before adding some orange highlights in the middle and painting the candle white. A little CA glue will fix Freddy and Bonnie's heads firmly in place and I can glue the guitar to Bonnie's hands and the cupcake plate to Chica's outstretched arms. All that's left to do then is give each of the animatronics some teeny tiny color appropriate pupils with little black dots in the middle. 
And with that, my trio of bad guy band members is finished, which means all I need to do is make them a stage to stand on. To make my stage, I happen to have this perfectly sized offcut of foam that I just cut off, and to make the stage slightly curved, I'll trace the curve of my turntable disc, then chop away until I've got a mostly rounded profile. A little sanding of the foam will ensure my lungs are filled with microplastics and a little foam safe super glue will let me attach a very thin sheet on top that I can cut down to just slightly oversized. This will be the floor of the stage and I want it to be wooden so I'll cut a bunch of unequal lines into the surface and round the edges that overhang so that it looks like they jut off the edge of the stage. I'll then add some random little lines in the middle to make it look a little bit more like wooden planks before using a teeny tiny sculpting tool to carve a whole bunch of wooden texture into the top. Once that's finished, I'll brush the surface with a stiff metal brush to add that last layer of surface texture and I can paint the entire surface with a heavy brown wash. Finally, I'll paint the bottom of the stage black and set it aside while I get to work making the wall. I'm going with a bog standard brick wall for the back of the stage, but that means I need to make some scale bricks, which means marking out half inch spaces along the length of my sheet and scoring a whole bunch of little lines across the sheet. I'll then make two sets of marks slightly offset from one another that I can use to make the equally sized offset bricks. This took an obnoxiously long time in real life, but thanks to the power of editing, you only have to suffer through eight seconds of tedium. Finally, for that last bit of bricky texture, I'll roll a rolled up roll of aluminium foil back and forth across the foam until I've achieved maximum bricky texture, at which point I'm ready for some paint. To paint my bricks, I'll completely coat them in a mixture of red and brown, then once it's dry, I'll give the whole thing a hell of a thick coat of black wash. Before that's had a chance to dry, I'll haphazardly dab it away until I'm left with a well-worn, sooty brick wall. On the back wall of Freddy's Pizzeria, there's a white checkerboard pattern, but you're having a laugh if you think I'm going to paint all those squares, so instead I cheated and printed out said pattern on some thick cardstock. I'll cut my cardstock to size, then give it a coat of high gloss Mod Podge so it looks a little less like a printed out piece of thick cardstock before gluing it onto my wall. Now while I cheated with the checkerboard pattern, I didn't cheat with the clouds. Instead I rolled out an extra thin sheet of white clay and using some circle cutters I cut out a whole bunch of little white circles that I then cut down so they'd fit together into a kinda wonky cloud shape. I then made a second circle based cloud shape to fit on top and bake the whole thing in the oven before adding some blue outlines to the edges. I also made a little foam sun for the other side of the wall, but I made that off camera since it took me a shocking amount of time to figure out how to make a sun with equally spaced rays. Before I attach the sun and cloud to the wall though, I'll stick a couple lengths of thread and hold them in place with glue. This way it looks like the clouds are hanging from the ceiling rather than stuck to the wall. To anchor the sun, I'll use a little cardboard spacer so it's slightly off the bricks. I can then pull the thread taut and tape it to the back of the foam and that's my wall finished. A bead of hot glue will hold it together with my stage and I can add a bit of weathering so it's not quite so pretty and clean. I've mixed up some green and brown to make a gross, mossy, moldy mix that I can apply liberally along the floor and down the walls as well as around the rounded edges of the cloud and the sun. Otherwise, with that done, I can pop the three horrifying animatronics in place and that's us done here and on to the glamour shots. As always, a big ol' thank you to my delightful patrons, and a special hey how are you to my newest patrons, Rigby Texas Carter, Ruby St. Dennis, Raymond Barnell, Emery Brooke, Rebecca, Brandon Kirkwood, Ashley Moretti, Cash Money, 
Osenarin Q, Vince Joy, Matthew Bilby, and Min Paulin Martin. You are the animatronic monster within which my childlike soul is trapped. The trailer for Five Nights at Freddy's movie got roughly 30 million views in a couple of weeks, and if this video doesn't get the exact same number of views, I'll consider my life's work a complete failure. No pressure. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers.